Good morning. Chapter 6, Lesson 6 is on page 282, and it's called Factoring by Grouping. And the clue is that when we're factoring by grouping, we're going to see that usually there are four terms in these polynomials. So let's make sure we got four terms because that's going to be our clue right off the bat. And we sure do. We have one term, two terms, three terms, four terms. So we know we've got those. We can probably use this technique factoring by grouping. And the way these problems are set up is we actually literally group them together in groups of two. And sometimes we can see fun things that fall out. So we have the first group, which is x cubed plus 3x squared. And we have the second group, which is the 2x plus 6. If we stare at x cubed plus 3x squared, we can see that we can factor out an x squared from those two, which leaves us with an x plus 3. If we look at the second terms here, we have a 2 we can factor out, which leaves us with an x plus 3. And lo and behold, we can remove the x plus 3 as the factor. And if we do that, we're left with x squared plus 2. So to clean it up, x plus 3, x squared plus 2. The clue is we're going to have four terms in each of these problems. Let's try something a little more challenging, number 23. c to the 6th minus c to the 4th minus c squared plus 1. Yes, we do have four terms. Let's group them. This one's going to get a little interesting. There's our first group. Minus 1. I'm going to put that minus 1 in front of this so I can keep myself organized. c squared plus 1. Notice how the sign changed. I'm grouping them together. I end up with minus c squared um, I'm sorry, minus 1. Let's make that change. See, I don't want to make a mistake. Perfect. So if I factor this out, minus 1 times c squared is minus c squared. Minus 1 times minus 1 gives me that 1. So if we look at this first grouping here, we can factor out a c to the 4th, which leaves me with a c squared minus 1. Minus 1 times c squared minus 1. How convenient. We can take out the c squared minus 1 and stick it on the outside as a factor. c squared minus 1. That leaves me with a c to the fourth minus 1. Ah, but we remember c to the fourth minus 1 is the difference of two squares. So let me just finish this parentheses around here. So we have c squared minus 1. And we know that the, this is the difference of two squares. c squared minus 1 times c squared plus 1. We remember that, the difference of two squares. And we know that c squared minus 1 is the difference of two squares. c minus 1 times c plus 1. That's this piece. We have c squared minus 1, and we have c squared plus 1, these two pieces. And yet again, we have something else we can factor. c minus 1, c plus 1, nothing's changed there. We know this is the difference of two squares, c minus 1, c plus 1. And we know that this one is not the difference of two squares because there's a plus sign here. So when we collect everything, we can actually say this turns out to be c minus 1 times c minus 1 times c plus 1 times c plus 1 times c squared plus 1. And we simplify that all together by making it c minus 1 squared, c plus 1 squared, and c squared plus 1. One. Sticky problem. Let me go back and identify the difference of two squares. Here's one. Here's another. That one became these two. This one became this one, which became this one. 
c squared minus 1 is also the difference of two squares. So that became c minus 1 and c plus 1. So when we put it all together, we ended up with c minus 1, c minus 1, c plus 1, c plus 1, c squared plus 1. The difference of two, squared, two squares, I think, appeared once, twice, three different times. So our final answer, c minus 1 squared, c plus 1 squared, c squared plus 1. These take a little knack. Just go slow. See if you can factor them out completely. A little bit of practice. We'll all do just fine. See you tomorrow.